Welcome to your weekend preview, Pro Motocross and SMX, brought to you by Monster Energy here at Bud's Creek. Next to last motocross race of the season. You probably know the score as far as championships are concerned. Hayden Deegan, very likely he's going to wrap up the 250 Pro Motocross title this weekend. He only needs to score 30 points, and he scored more than 30 points at every race this year. Try to get him on to get his thoughts on wrapping up this title, but probably still wanting to go for race wins. But that's just the start of the news this weekend. The biggest story of all, the return of Eli Tomac, the 2022 450 Pro Motocross champ who did not race motocross last year due to injury, hasn't raced it thus far this year due to injury. To get a living legend like Tomac back in action is going to be really exciting as well. So a lot to discuss on a track a lot of the riders like here at Bud's Creek. All right, we're here with Jordan. Jordan, how are you feeling this week coming into Bud's Creek? Uh, feeling good. Had a good week of practice. Uh, Took it a little bit easier this week than we have uh, since we're here at Press Day today. Uh, it was really, really hot back home, so um, we took it a little easier. I feel good, feel ready to get out there and uh, ride. So we've seen uh, we've seen some good performances from you this summer, and we've seen some performances that I'm sure you're not too happy with. What's the disparity there? Why are we? Why is there? I mean, there's some motos where you're finishing top five, and then there's some motos you're finishing 15th. Yeah, I think uh, for the majority of the motos this year, I've had uh, really good speed and fitness. Um, you know. A uh, couple rounds got sick and didn't have very good fitness, but other than those two rounds, I've been one of the fittest guys out there, I feel. Um, and I've had, you know, that I would say fourth to seventh place speed for most most races, uh, if not even a little bit better. But um, yeah, I've uh, been struggling really bad with the starts, and uh, then whenever you get off to a rough start, it's, uh, it's hard to stay up in the chaos back there, and uh, had a lot of first lap two lap falls this year and um, yeah you're just uh, in a hole whenever you do that the travel has been pretty gnarly this year too do you feel like that plays a factor you know if you're if your flight gets messed up on thursday and then you're not well rested for press day you gotta yeah. and then just rolls into the weekend yeah for sure it was uh all the traveling was going pretty good until uh jason wagon and i kind of jinxed it on twitter but uh yeah uh wash really um you know most of the time i can deal with like not much sleep whatever but uh Washugo, I was about 15 minutes into the first moto and I was just like pretty much done and I ended up like falling two times at the end of that moto like while running third so um, that was a bummer but uh, yeah I mean uh, the travel is pretty tough it's uh, it's pretty wide open for the outdoors um, I've been traveling a little bit more by myself instead of uh, the whole family coming uh, they're here this weekend but um, they've only been to I think this is their fourth race during outdoors so um, it's a little bit easier traveling solo to get a little bit more rest, but uh, yeah, I feel I feel pretty good. This is kind of my first uh, time making it this far into the season since uh, 2018. So um, yeah, it's kind of like I'm learning it all over again. Glad to see you back from injury. Uh, we've had a lot of thumb injuries lately. Could you take me through the recovery process a little bit and how it affects your riding? Yeah, for just a thumb injury, this was uh, quite a long recovery. It started out with getting the surgery and I was in um, a splint with pins in my thumb for actually seven weeks so that part was was a pretty long portion of being or just having a stabilized joint and then they take the pins out and that's and that was another couple weeks of recovery before I could actually get back on the on the motorcycle so I think I was around maybe the, the 10 week mark or so from when I got back on the motorcycle um, and now uh, yeah, we're here. You know, I'm back at the races, but being off for, for two summers like this was uh, was enough. It's, it's good to be back. The 450 class in Supercross was one of the most competitive we've seen, and a, a lot of injuries caused the motocross season to lighten up. Now with only a few rounds left, it seems like everybody's returning. How do you see these last few rounds going for yourself, and is this maybe to get some uh, good seat time for SMX? Yeah, this is going to be great, great building for SMX. Get back in the groove, get the you know the starts in um yeah i'm just looking forward to it like getting back out here getting on the gate getting racing doing what i love we saw kind of a different chance high miss last weekend uh in that first moto what was clicking for you did you find something in the weeks off um just got my body back to 100 percent health and uh times i could ride just try to find fine tune my technique a little bit worked uh worked pretty close with jet and hunter and uh, just the team you know, trying to fine tune everything, and I feel like throughout the rounds, I, I lost uh, some of my technique a little bit. Was just being a little heavy on the bike, a little lazy. So, try to just focus back on that and get back to the smooth, uh, hard uh, technique that I got. So, 
trying to get back to that, and I feel like it showed at Unadilla. Um, my speed was really good. My raw speed right now is awesome. Super stoked with it, and my fitness is getting better and better each weekend. So, uh, yeah, just overall, um, I feel like I was more like myself at Unadilla, and it showed. That, uh, that, that crash was pretty gnarly, pretty scary watching it from the outside. Can you walk us through what happened and, and uh, immediately after how you felt? Yeah, uh, it's tricky. I took that same line every lap, and that time I came through, I've rewatched it a hundred times by now. It seems like, you know, it's every every other post on my social media is that crash for a little bit. So, but yeah, I just, it was just weird. I just caught an edge and yeah, all she rose full sideways and I'm flying through the air. Um, bit of a bummer with the flagger situation with the bike on top of me. Uh, got a pretty gnarly burn on my arm and uh, yeah, that was uh, not, not great. Definitely doesn't feel good right now, but I mean, overall, blessed to be walking away with just a burn on my arm and uh, you know just a little bit of soreness but I mean honestly I, f I feel really good right now considering that so I yeah I'd say I'm pretty lucky yeah yeah I agree um, any lingering injuries how do you feel like this the, the week in between now and then how did you feel do you have any lingering injuries from that like the, the week off like in between then and now you know, during the week, did you feel it? Um, no, honestly, I rode Wednesday this week and I felt good. Um, and before that, I had my ankle injury, but took some time off and got that healed up. And my ankle's still not 100%, still definitely a little sore right now. But I mean, when you get the boot on there and you get everything together, it's, uh, you know, there's enough pressure and uh, support there to make you feel good. So, yeah, overall, I um, feel like I'm like 90% healthy for sure. Um, but yeah, should be good. We know you didn't want to race the last few outdoors, but you've kind of been put into a position where you have to. Are you nervous about it at all? Yeah, exactly. So uh, didn't really want to race outdoors at all, but uh, to crack these top 20, I have to. Um, so I'm six points behind uh, Kel Chisholm, and uh, I have absolutely zero prep going into this, so it's definitely going to be a little tougher than I want it to. But uh, hey, this will actually help me go into SMX with my fitness and everything. We'll just uh, go for it and uh, see where it takes us. Speaking of fitness, how much fit, how much training have you been doing uh, recently now that you've retired? Right, so um, I've been doing a lot of training. You know, I cycle a lot, go to the gym. Um, but you know, I ra just raced Brazil Arena Cross last weekend, and uh, you know, I'm kind of just mainly a Supercross guy now. But um, I just don't want to go in these LCQs and the SMX. So uh, yeah, we're here. We'll try crack a couple top 20s, and we got to try beat the 11. What's the word on uh, Supercross for next year? Yeah, I don't think I'll be doing full-time Supercross next year, but I think I may do a few rounds. We'll see how it goes. Still working on everything for next year, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how things end up. All right, another solid week. You're set to wrap up the title this weekend if everything goes right. Did you ever see yourself being this dominant early in your career? Um, yeah, definitely. It's a dream come true to be in this position. I think I've, I think it's done a lot with people doubting me pretty much my whole career. So it's given me motivation. And honestly, a lot of those people gave me this motivation to be this great, I think, at a young age. And uh, honestly, I got to give them some props, too, because uh, having a 70 point lead in my second outdoor season is unreal. So um, it's definitely is a dream come true. And it just shows uh, hard work and having a family around you definitely helps. Do you think this might have been a possibility last year if there weren't some other outside factors that, that happened during the season? Yeah, 100%. I think, uh, I mean, obviously I had that engine blow up, which kind of threw it off a little bit. But again, that one, would have, it would have been hard to win. That was, uh, I wasn't as fast. Uh, fitness wasn't as good. So it would definitely would have been a hard title to win. Uh, obviously, we didn't win it. So... That, that obviously is the narrative, but uh, yeah, but we're, we're a lot better this year. You said it would have been hard to win. Does that mean this one was easy to win? Yeah, I definitely, I would say, I mean, it's, you train hard, so these type of moments are easy. So I train really hard, work my butt off. Uh, I mean, I have a strong family base and it, it pays off where you can come race on the weekend and it's easier than, it's easier than it was last year, I will say that. You brought so much, uh, so much personality back into the sport. What do you think contributes to you being like this? Was it just how you were raised, who you were raised around? What, what is it? Yeah, I think it was the way. I mean, the people I was raised around. One, I mean, I was growing up as a militia kid. I, I wasn't. No one cared what people thought, and that's how I work. I could care less what anyone says on the internet when anyone tells me 
Uh, I take good advice 100%. I like taking that in because that's what will help me be the best, be a champion. And uh, honestly, I just I focus on myself. I grind. I get I get lippy every here and there, you know, turn it up, get some, some insights rolling on uh, the media pages. But besides that, uh, my main goal is to be a champion, so that's what I focus on.